We've made our way up to Eureka, California, out here at the place known as the Blue Ox. Does this guy have something to do with the title? Well, Joel, I would say yes, because we're in timber country. This is some of the biggest timber in the world. And, um, and Paul Bunyan and the duplicate here carved from him, yes, I would say has something to do with the name. When you drive into your compound facility, you fill in the word. I'm just looking for the into right the word. The village. Yeah. The village. Yep. There's a lot going on in here. It's a little, a little bit more than uh, than you can explain. I know that for <laughs> sure. For it's been 45 years in the making, so it's a long time. In fact, why don't I take you in? introduce you to Rainbow, and she can start showing you around and we'll get this thing started. How's that? That, that sounds great, because I'm telling you, there is a lot to see. Just drive it in those gates right there. Unbelievable. So we are currently standing in a building that was built in 1904. This was the original power plant for the Eureka trolley system here in Eureka. Further back, we have our print shop where we have our 1909 letterpress, we have different fabrication rooms, the lathe rooms, we have um, an upstairs as well that houses other areas. So we have quite a lot going on in just our main building. So how did it go from a power plant to the Blue Ox? Well, it started in 1973. At that time, this building was condemned, mm -hmm. so the power plant wasn't here. And Eric Hollenbeck got a loan from the bank, I believe it was $300, to buy this dilapidated building. As he started building up the different, the equipment he brought in here, so all of our heavy equipment that we have here, that we use for all of our mill works, it ranges from the 1850s to the 1950s. In our lathe room, we have our 1890s lathe that can turn columns up to 18 feet. Wow. One of our oldest pieces of equipment here, treadle-powered scroll saw. It's a treadle powered, so you can see his foot is pushing the treadle at the bottom. So all he's doing is basically kind of winding it up, right? I'm yep. simplifying it, but he's yep. just winding it up. And then just like that, he's taking yep. that piece out of the wood. Exactly. He can get that real nice organic shape with the scroll saws. This is our pedal powered scroll saw, also known as the Velasa saw. And you can see the addition of the seat, and now he has pedals, so he can have the power of both legs, not just one. Ah. With this piece of equipment, he also has the ability to slow it down as well. Wow. This is the 1890s shaper. You're going to notice that it's going to be putting a profile in the edge of the wood. Mm. So typically, people will look at it, and they'll go, oh, it's a router. It's yeah. very similar to what the router does, yes. I assume Eric has been doing this for a couple years, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So it's given the character and the design to the sides of... Exactly. Wow. Exactly. This is a treadle-powered cutoff saw, so he's going to be going back to the treadle-powered, where it's one leg. Mm. And you can see how he winds it up. Whoa! Just like a table saw. That is incredible. What? <laughs> that is amazing. And this is just the beginning. We have two education programs going on here, besides the Millworks, and one of them is high school students. Then secondly, in 2014, we started a program for returning veterans. And as our first project with the uh, veterans, from this one photograph, that's the only known photograph in the world of the hearse that carried Abraham Lincoln yeah. in 1865. And yeah. we scaled this and built an exact replica. Oh my. And that's yes. it in the uh, 150th uh, commemoration in Springfield, Illinois. Wow. And these, all of the molds that we made to make all of the castings. We melded them down and recast them and made all these shapes identical to what the, uh, what the original was, remember? Wow.
I found all of this equipment in the woods around this county, thrown away and abandoned. This one's a prime example right over here. And this is a tenoner. This cuts tenons for mortise and tenon joint. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! This is the oldest joint known to, known to man. This is the grandfather of all joints. Um, we have found traces of mortise and tenon in Mesopotamia. Jeez. It dates back that far. Wow. Yeah. So it's basically just cutting out like a puzzle piece. Yes. I mean, I'm simplifying it yes. here. Yes, yes, absolutely. How did you, you, you found this machine? Yes, uh, in, the, in the blackberries, and then brought it in and refurbished it. Most all of these I found in the woods. We're out in the village, yep. and it sounds like you have a lot, a lot going on out here as well. We have the blacksmith shop behind us, um, and Patrick is uh, giving a class to uh, um, a student who's drawing that out right now. When you say drawing that out, what do you mean? Making it smaller and stretching oh, it out. Okay. And it's basically you have to do it when it's on fire or when it's molting. Or when it's hot, and why do you think? Because uh, it's soft. Weak atomic force, mm -hmm. and you're absolutely right. And as soon as it cools down, those atoms pull back together again, and you ain't going to move it at all. Yeah. So simplify it. When it's soft, hit it. When it's hard, don't even try. You got it. There we go. <laughs> all right. He's holding that without a glove. I mean, I would imagine it's hot. No, the heat doesn't, the heat doesn't travel to the backside. Oh, there he goes. You see the metal move? Yeah. Um, over here is the foundry. That was where we did all the castings. Uh, the next one over is the uh, lapidary, where you shape uh, stones and minerals. <clears throat> and uh, Phyllis has given a class uh, to a lady in the lapidary right now. So in the lapidary, we take stones and cut them and shape them to make uh, jewelry, rings, necklaces, all kinds of lovely stuff. You can get some pictures later. It's really can cool. I can I touch some of these? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this is just taking a, a, a... That one happens to be a piece of petrified wood. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. So we have machines that can cut the stuff and polish it. So uh, they're all set up over there to show you guys how that's done. Oh, okay. So how many students can you have in here at any given time? Well, we were just donated some of these wonderful um, arbors over here. So I think it would probably be uh, about three or four. Three or four, and how long do the uh, classes last? For about six weeks, and they will learn everything from picking the stone, what the stones do, different kinds, um, all the way to finishing uh, a nice cabochon using some of the stones that are sitting on the table over there. Wow. <laughs> one. So it's a wonderful thing, something like this. They'll make something like this. Oh, this is yeah. a, a Mexican moss agate. And I shaped it and it's um, and I stabilized it because some rocks, especially in the so uh, southwest, um, get a little bit cracky because they're so dry. Yeah. They're so dry, but that's a moss agate. So hopefully they'll make something like this. Buildings were saved from demolition and brought here when we came up with the idea of building the village, which I don't think we've talked to you about yet. I, so we are going to be building. I'm a like, full, I'm look. Turn the mic away from me. No, no, but look at this. I'm looking. We. I just can't. Wow! It just keeps cool. going and it's going and going. Cool. Yeah, it's been gradual, so we can adjust to each stage, but it, it just keeps going. So here we have the stained glass studio. Jo here is getting uh, her her first lesson on how to do stained glass, and Blaze is our instructor. The students wow. who take the workshop and the full classes will learn how to cut glass, how to do the lead in there, that's what it's called? Yes, okay, I haven't got to do this yet. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's in your village. I know, I never get to do nothing fun. <laughs> 
So um, then this will be a finished piece that people t that taking the workshop will be able to take home with them. So this is her piece that she's creating and it, gets to she keep. She just started it today. The glass cutter is really a steel wheel that puts a weak spot in the glass. Mm -hmm. So you just follow along the lines. Well, it's like tracing. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. He's making that look pretty simple. Was it that simple? Yeah. <laughs> if you trace well. You if you trace, <laughs> there's the key. If you trace well, it, oh, you don't have any gloves or, no? Just, good, okay, all right, there you go. All right, come on now. You made that look really simple. I've been doing it a long <laughs> time. <laughs> And then I assume like in between is where we're going to have like, uh, you know, metal pieces in there? Or? Yeah, the lead is malleable and it's shaped like an H. So the glass will fit in both sides of that H and then that way you can make the shapes. And then once it's all been wrapped together, then you solder all the intersections like this. Oh yeah, okay. Thank you very much, this is okay. very cool, I appreciate it. The, the focus is showing people how things were made and letting them know that they can do these things as well because they're traditions that need to be saved for the future. And we all need to have the, the joy of making things with our hands. <laughs> well, this is just one of those spots that uh, just make you proud to say that uh, this is our California. Absolutely. Wow. Milling, blacksmithing, stained glass making, Rocks and minerals, shaping, shingle making, tours, shops. We haven't even talked about the Redwood Shrine. There's a whole lot out here at the Blue Ox in Eureka. Mm.